Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cybersecurity Meg and I'm super stoked that you're here. Today's discussion is a really important one and it's important to me because I assume if you're watching this, you're probably going to be applying for some sort of cybersec or infosec job coming up soon. And that means you're probably going to have to do some interviews. Obviously, I want to provide tips and best practices that are going to help you land any job. So that's the overall goal of this video. And to be able to provide you with the best tips, I kind of crowdsourced from my colleagues, my professional colleagues and friends who also work in cybersecurity, so that I could come up with this list that really kind of hones in on exactly what we feel are the top five things we can tell you to help you best prepare for an interview in cybersec or infosec. So just keep that in mind. These tips aren't specifically coming from me, albeit I do 100% support them. They've been crowdsourced from a bunch of professionals with a varying wide range of experience. Let's get into it. My first tip, and excuse me if you see me looking down at my phone, I just use it to keep myself organized. But nonetheless, my first tip is that technical skill and technical acumen aren't everything. Of course, having a strong technical foundational basis is imperative, especially when you're applying to those more senior roles that are techie. But if you aren't able to effectively and concisely communicate your findings, maybe of an incident or a report to the relevant and pertinent stakeholders within the organization, this isn't a good contrast to have. So to kind of clarify this, it's important to have the technical skills but you also need to pair it with the soft skills. And this should be able to be expressed to the hiring manager or HR or whomever you're speaking to. And some of the top soft skills I would say are really important in cybersecurity are being able to communicate effectively and concisely, as I already mentioned, being a self-motivated person who can also motivate and encourage those around them, Having a good attitude, because let's be honest, there are many days working in cybersecurity where things just don't go right, or maybe you're having an incident or an issue, and you have to be the kind of person to be calm, take things in, take a few breathers, and project a good attitude and good vibes. We don't want those people who have the not very good vibes bringing down the rest of us, eh? This leads me into point number two, or rather tip number two, if you will. And this is to prepare before your interview a list of questions to ask to whoever is interviewing you. This does quite a few things. One, it shows that you've taken the time and you care enough to put in the extra research to know more about the organization or the person that you're interviewing with. Two, this is also really important because it presents you a chance to ask questions to the potential employer. Let's remember that interviews are a bit of a two-way street. I think that often this is forgotten and sometimes we just feel as if the potential employer is interviewing us, but you should also utilize this time to interview the employer. You wanna make sure that you are a good fit for the organization and that the organization is going to meet most of your needs that you're looking for out of it. Some of my favorite questions that I personally ask I like to kind of understand if the hiring manager is more of a strategical or operational planner. And what I mean by that is, is the organization planning just a few months or a year ahead, or are they more strategic and they're looking at the bigger picture of how things are going to work and they're planning three to five years ahead. Another great question that's one of my favorites to ask and really creates great dialogue between myself and an interviewing person is where do you see yourself or your team in the organization in five years? What goals does the hiring manager want to achieve? What challenges does he need to overcome? Getting a sense of where exactly the organization is heading, or more specifically, the cybersecurity unit that you're going to be working in, will really give you a fit of whether or not you belong in that specific team. One of my other favorite questions to ask is, what challenges or what hurdles do you want me to help you overcome? Where can I benefit the organization and where can I have the biggest impact? What are your expectations of me? These show that you're really wanting to step up and help the organization and you really want to understand exactly where the issues are so that you can make the largest impact as an employee that gets hired. 
this leads me to my third tip or rather the crowd's third tip, if you will. And this is to prepare scenarios ahead of time where you are able to effectively and efficiently discuss with the hiring manager the areas and instances in the past where you have really made um, an impact and a difference. And I have a couple examples of this. So for example one, let's say that you are currently working in a security operation center and you've noticed that a lot of the tier one analysts are spending hours every week doing a very manual and laborious task. It's super repetitive, it's menial, and they really shouldn't be spending so much time on it. So you took the initiative and you created a script that completely automates that task for them. No more manual work is involved and now the security operations center can start using those multiple hours per week to put it towards a task that's going to be more beneficial and helpful in the security operations center. You've automated something, you've saved time, and time is money, so this is a really great example that you could provide. Obviously, only give these examples though if they're legitimate. Another example I like to speak about is say you work in SAP security. And again, it's another hypothetical example, but you were able to detect that a bank account number was consistently being changed, which is kind of odd. So you discussed and investigated and analyzed with your fraud team, and you ended up preventing $50,000 worth of fraud from occurring. You saved your company a lot of money. Any statistics, data, percentages, analytics that you can provide to prove your return on investment is going to be incredibly beneficial to you. Let's remember that when a company is hiring someone, they're hiring someone to provide a service. The company is going to pay you in exchange, you're going to give a good or a service. If you can elevate your return on investment for the company, improve your worth via the usage of data analytics and basically hard facts of things that you've accomplished, this is really going to elevate your interview. I recommend talking about things such as saving time, automating things, saving money, um, integrating tools, maybe um, getting rid of having so many tools so that you don't have a different tool sprawl. All of these things are going to be really important and kind of trigger some keywords for hiring managers or HR. This leads me back to my fourth tip, and that is to connect all of your successes and your technical skills and your soft skills to the business. This is, of course, going to be a lot more applicable to the private sector, so not much for the government. However, it could still be applicable, so keep watching. The point here is that in organizations, IT exists to support the business. Supporting the business allows the business to make more money, which in turn keeps the organization running. We can all agree on that, right? So when you're in an interview, if you're able to connect your ability to detect fraud easily to the business and say that you have the skill set to save the business $50,000 by detecting all of this fraud that could occur, this is going to be a huge bonus. Always try to correlate a specific skill set that you have to the business, because at the end of the day, this is going to show that you are a very well-rounded person who understands exactly what the role of the cybersecurity or InfoSec team is to protect the organization so that they can make money. The fifth and final tip that I have for this is to prepare ahead of time a five-year plan where you can discuss with the hiring manager exactly where you want to be in five years. And this isn't related to your personal life. Don't go telling someone that you want to be able to run a half marathon in the next five years. I'm specifically speaking about the fact that you should prepare a five-year plan that says, hey, hiring manager, in five years, I want to be, for instance, an incident response manager. Say right now you're a security analyst and you want to become an incident response manager in the next five years. I would tell my hiring potential hiring manager that I'm going to achieve this by getting a specific certification, by taking autopsies digital forensics courses, by improving my Linux skill set. If you are able to provide this five-year plan to the hiring manager, this shows quite a few things, but namely it shows that you're a well-organized person who's extremely passionate, has a plan and a goal, and that you're already thinking about how you're going to execute it and make it happen. 
I'm not exactly sure who said it. I want to give credit to whoever said this quote, but basically the gist of the quote is, if you don't have a plan, then you're planning to fail. Being able to provide a five-year plan, even though realistically it probably won't pan out exactly as you say it to the hiring manager, this shows that you're willing and to be a forward thinker and you're targeting something that you have initiative and you want to make sure that the organization that you're wanting to work with is able to help you get there. I hope that these five tips were really helpful to you. I also wish you the best of luck if you're going into an interview. If ever you have any questions or you want to discuss anything, whether it be about um, interviewing or the hiring processes or anything like that. Of course, it's different upon which organization or entity you're applying to, but I'm always happy to help wherever I can. So feel free to comment down below or you can direct message me on Instagram, Twitter, what have you. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.